everyone. Today we're going to tie an EP fleeing crab pattern. Now, this was originally designed by Enrico Puglisi, and it simulates the look and um, movement of a crab in flight from a predator. So as you can see, the you know defensive position with the uh, claws up and the side action of this fly really make it a realistic um, pattern. Now it can be tied in a variety of, of colors and sizes, uh, mostly between a number one and number six, um, but it targets um, a couple of speci species like the bonefish and permit specifically. Uh, we're going to start with a Gamakatsu SL11 3H hook. It's a number six, and we're going to reverse our vise and actually put the uh, shank side up, and you'll see why in a second. The thread we're going to use is the 6 aught Vivas uh, fluorescent green, and we're just going to lay down some dressing on the shank, trim off the excess, and continue back the shank to the bend of the hook. And maybe just a little bit beyond that. Then we're gonna bring our thread up to the mid fly position and park it right there. Here's where we're gonna tie in our weight. Now the weight is a medium plain lead dumbbell eye. Um, and obviously for this to ride upright in the water, this needs to be on the bottom. So we're just gonna lock that in with a couple cross wraps. And then some figure eights. And then some round wraps to lock it in. It's important that this be perpendicular to uh, the fly shank and just for the purpose of making it ride properly in the water column. Okay, the next piece of this is to tie in our the cap of our body. And the cap would be basically the crab shell. And this is made with um, a tan furry foam. And you can buy these um, uh, foam body cutters from River Road Creations that will allow you to um, stamp these out of a blank rather than buying them individually made. To do this, we're going to turn our hook around and stage our thread at the back. I think I'll just straighten that just a little bit. There we go. And on this pattern, we're going to tie in just the tip of it back here beyond the bend of the hook. You can see that's in there pretty good. And we're going to bring our thread up to right beside the dumbbell eye. Here's where we're going to tie in our shrimp eyes. Now, I made these out of 20-pound monofilament, uh, and I'll do another video about how to do that, uh, but it's very easy and inexpensive. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put this in right beside the dumbbell eye. We don't want these too far apart. On a number six, you know, it's it's kind of this is actually a, the smallest fly I would probably tie or hook that I would use to tie this fly just because of all the things that are going on. But we're going to cross wrap that just to hold it in place. And as you can see, it's right in line with the uh, dumbbell eye. We're also going to take this and just for measurement purposes, how far out it sticks, you can see, well, we can't see our eye very well, so we're going to pull that down so it sticks out just beyond, just beyond the shell of that 
crab, the body. And then from there, we're going to lock that off. And instead of just cutting this tag, what we're going to do is we're going to do something I learned from the boys over at Riffle, is we're going to turn this at a 90 degree angle and actually take that monofilament down along the shank just a little ways, just enough to lock it off. Uh, definitely you don't want the eyes coming off as you're fishing with the fly. So that gives us a great position for that. We're going to do the same for the other. And to do that, we're going to bring our thread over to the other side. Same thing. And Okay, here's where we need to adjust the length. Again, we're going to take this and see where our fly goes. Make sure our eyes stick out appropriately. And that should work. And just like the other side, we're going to turn this perpendicular and just put, follow along the hook shank. Whoop. There we go. Okay. We'll trim off that excess. We're just going to bring this up and kind of finish dressing out that shank. Okay. So here is where we put our body material in. So to do that, we've got to take our thread back to the body. And the first material we're going to tie in is a cactus chenille, large, in a hot orange. And we just want to grab the tip of this back where the body and Again, this is a smaller fly, so it takes a little longer. There we go. We're going to lay that to the side. And then the next part of this is the woolly critter brush. As you can see, this has a lot of tentacles on it. Um, we're going to try to get as many of those pointing down as possible. But we're also going to tie this in right at the same spot. As the body. We're going to lay that to the side. Okay. Now here's where we're going to take the thread up and stage it right at the midpoint of the fly. The reason why is because the claws are what goes in next. Now these are the EP uh, crab claws in sand. These are the small size. Um, a lot of people cut these and put them in that way. I like to just kind of wrap them around the um, equal distance so that they're evenly distributed on both sides. But I like to just, whoop, wrong way. <laughs> um, I like to wrap these around and just tack it with a cross wrap that way and a cross wrap this way. And as you can see, you can still slide it along a little bit. And that gives you really even distribution of the legs. Now, we're not going to just leave them there. We're actually going to take them down along the shank uh, a little bit on each side to get them on the outside of the eyes. So 
just a couple wraps to get these up front. And we're going to cross over. Be careful not to grab your eye as you're doing some of these. And then go in outside of that eye as well. Okay. And as you can see, we're, we're good there. Okay. At this point, we're going to take our line the whole way up to the, the eye, park it there, because now we're going to start to wrap in the body. The body will start with the orange, with the chenille, and we're going to do loose wraps. These aren't going to be tight. Um, this is a smaller fly, but we are going to go on both sides of each one of these claws and eyes. So as you can see, we're going on both sides of the dumbbell eye, both sides of the shrimp eyes, and both sides of the claws, and locking that off. Trim the excess. And now we have the internal portion of it. This really just gives some variation of light and some color, may even simulate an egg uh, sack to some degree. But now we're going to go in with the woolly critter. Same direction, same um, looseness, but try to get between some of the wraps made. There we go, making sure that our eyes don't get impeded by our wraps. All right, there we go. And making as many of these tentacles come down as possible. And we'll get over here and lock that off. And there is a wire in here, so if you don't feel comfortable using your um, scissors, um, a pair of cutters could be on the side as well. And what we're going to do is we're just going to trim around this hook. Now is the time to get all those little fuzzies away and out of the... Okay. And we're not going to finish it off at this point. We're just going to make some wraps there. What we are going to do is we're going to give it a flat top. And what I mean by that is go into the top of the fly and trim off as much of the excess. If you can pull some of those tentacles down, great. But trim off as much of the excess um, material on the top. This will give us a good base for putting our super glue on. As you can see, that's a pretty flat area. So we're going to give this a good dose of super glue. And then we pull. The last step is to pull our body over all of that. And you know, you can do a check just to make sure everything is lined up where you want it. But the goal is that we're going to try and get this little tip and grab just a little bit of it with our thread. And I think we did. There we go. Okay. Wrap that up. This is normally where I would break my, my thread. But, uh, <laughs> so... We're just going to dress that. Then we're going to do a whip finish on that. And don't worry if you get some fibers in the eye area. Um, generally, all this material is fairly soft, and your tippet should be able to poke through pretty easily. And we'll just trim that off. 
Now, because this is going to be in salt water and bouncing across a lot of, of the bottoms, um, we're going to put a little solar res uh, bone dry on this. Uh, and that's a UV adhesive or epoxy. And a little bit on the top, a little bit on the bottom. And of course, we hit it with a light. Ten seconds is all that's needed, and we have our fleeing crab. And I think, as we can see, it's it's a fairly realistic uh, little bugger. Um, I call it a woolly bugger, but that's a whole nother fly. So there it is, the EP fleeing crab. I'm going to include the ingredient list or the recipe. Uh, following this email, this is um, or this email following this uh, close. And um, as you can see, real fishable and and uh, thanks for watching.